Welcome to the basic obstetric ultrasound training course for healthcare providers. Ultrasound plays an important role in identifying pregnancy-related conditions that put the mother or fetus at risk during delivery. In most low-income countries, there is a shortage of people experienced in performing pregnancy ultrasound. This course was created to train healthcare workers to perform basic pregnancy ultrasound in parts of the world where formal training is not available. The videos, as well as other educational materials, available at tinyurl.com backslash uwultrasound, are designed to be used in a two-week ultrasound course. The hands-on sessions in the trainer's guide are an essential component of this course and must be supervised by an experienced ultrasound practitioner. This is not a comprehensive pregnancy ultrasound course and does not result in an official certification or diploma. After you finish the course and pass the written and practical tests, we strongly recommend you have at least 40 hours of scanning experience with clinical mentoring before you undertake unsupervised scanning. My name is Dr. Christina Adams Waldorf, and I will be narrating this video in our pregnancy ultrasound series. This video will teach fetal and pelvic anatomy that can be seen with ultrasound in the first trimester. Please visit our website for access to all of our video and training materials. Now we will discuss some of the anatomy that becomes important in the first trimester of pregnancy. In this lesson, you will learn how to identify the gestational sac, yolk sac, fetus, and corpus luteum in the first trimester. We will also discuss the stages of fetal development during the first 13 weeks of life. The term embryology means the process of how a fetus develops. During the first 13 weeks, all of the major organs will develop and the fetus grows very fast. The first trimester is also important for us because it is the most accurate time in pregnancy to determine the gestational age. The egg is formed in the ovary. It then travels along the fallopian tube where it is fertilized on its way to the uterus by sperm. It takes several days for the egg to reach the uterus. Once the egg is fertilized and reaches the uterus, it begins to attach to the uterine lining, called endometrium, where it further divides and grows. Implantation of the fertilized egg into the uterine lining takes place at the end of the third gestational week. After the fertilized egg attaches to the uterus, it grows very rapidly into the fetus. Major organs begin to develop between six and 10 weeks. There are three structures that we can begin to see on ultrasound, one after the other during the first trimester. We will discuss what each structure looks like. It is important that you are able to recognize them because this reassures us that the pregnancy is normal. It also helps us to date the pregnancy. The first visible structure is a gestational sac, the second is a yolk sac, and third visible structure is the fetus. The first structure we are able to see in pregnancy is called the gestational sac. It is a collection of fluid surrounding the embryo. This starts to appear around six weeks after a missed menstrual period. The embryo itself is still too small to see at this point. A pregnancy that is destined to result in a miscarriage may also develop a gestational sac. A sac may also be visible even if the pregnancy is developing in the fallopian tube called an ectopic pregnancy. So a gestational sac is not a sure indication the pregnancy is normal and healthy. Here are two views of the same uterus. The upper left is a sagittal image. The lower right is transverse. The gestational sac contains fluid. How will it appear on ultrasound? Please pause the video now to discuss in the group. The answer is that the fluid will appear black. The gestational sac in each image is now outlined. Later, you will learn how to measure the gestational sac to determine the gestational age. The next normal structure that will appear in the first trimester pregnancy is the yolk sac. 
the yolk sac appears as a small round circle within the gestational sac when the sac is about 10 to 15 millimeters in size. The yolk sac feeds the fetus for the first seven weeks. You can see the yolk sac before you can see the fetus. Here you can see a gestational sac with the yolk sac. The fetus is not visible yet because this is a very early pregnancy. The yolk sac should be less than six millimeters in a normal pregnancy. When measuring the yolk sac, the calipers are placed on the inner walls of the yolk sac, not the outer walls. In this image, the ultrasound probe is on the abdomen, scanning through the bladder to create a sagittal image. This is called a transabdominal view. Can you see the bladder, uterus, gestational sac, and yolk sac? Please pause the video now to discuss within the group. These structures have been outlined and labeled to make them more obvious. Both the gestational sac and bladder contain fluid, so they appear black. After the yolk sac, the next structure you will see is the fetus. You may actually see the flicker of the fetal heart beating next to the yolk sac before you see the fetus. This occurs around six weeks gestational age. The image on the left is taken at six weeks gestation. Here you can see the gestational sac and the fetus. The right image is taken at eight weeks gestation. Here we can see the fetus and yolk sac together. Now we have labeled the structures. As the fetus grows, the yolk sac is no longer visible. Note that the calipers measure the length of the fetus in the right image, which is called a crown rump length. Now we can identify the face, head, body, and legs. Please pause the video now to identify these structures. Here, we have labeled the structures to make them more obvious. Note the placement of the calipers in the left image that measure the crown rump length. This image is taken at 12 weeks gestation. Often, you may see a corpus luteum cyst on the ovary during the first trimester. The corpus luteum is a cyst that develops on the ovary after the egg is released. It makes progesterone that helps to support the early pregnancy. It is normal to see an ovarian cyst with ultrasound during the first trimester. The corpus luteum often appears as a simple cyst. A simple cyst contains only fluid, so it appears black. The black sac corresponds to the corpus luteum. The grayer tissue to the upper right of the sac is actually normal ovarian tissue. The calipers, shown as white crosses in the image, measure the total size of the ovary, including the corpus luteum. Here is another corpus luteum. Can you see the ovary and corpus luteum? Please pause the video now to give everyone time to discuss in the group. Here we have labeled the corpus luteum and outlined the ovary to make them more obvious. Sometimes there is echogenic material inside the corpus luteum when it bleeds. This gives the corpus luteum the appearance of a complex cyst and is also normal. Can you identify the echogenic material inside the corpus luteum in each image? Please pause the video now to give the group time to discuss. Here, we have labeled the echogenic material within each cyst to make it more obvious. If the corpus luteum gets large, it may cause pain. This is common. After 10 to 12 weeks, the ovary should go back to a normal appearance with no visible corpus luteum. Progesterone is then produced by the placenta. Now let's see if you remember what we just learned. Pause the video now to give the group time to discuss the questions. The first question is what is the first structure seen in the first trimester? The answer is a gestational sac. What is the next structure you should see? The answer is a yolk sac. What structure appears after the yolk sac? 
The answer is a fetus. Which cystic structure is visible in the first trimester? The answer is a corpus luteum. Where is the corpus luteum located? The answer is in the ovary. Let's review the key points. Normal structures seen in the first trimester are the gestational sac, yolk sac, and fetus, in that order. Corpus luteum cysts can be simple or complex. In the next lesson, we will learn how to measure the gestational sac or the fetus to very accurately date the fetus and determine the due date. Here are questions for review. Why is it important to have accurate dating of the pregnancy? The answer is that it helps families plan for the birth, helps healthcare workers determine the date of a C-section if necessary, and helps to measure fetal growth. How long is the first trimester? The first trimester includes a period of time in early pregnancy until the end of the twelfth week. List the order of the pregnancy structures that should appear in the first trimester on ultrasound. The answer is a gestational sac, yolk sac, and then a fetus. What is the earliest week you can see a gestational sac? The answer is about six weeks gestational age. What does the corpus luteum do? It produces the hormone progesterone. Thank you for your attention and interest in learning pregnancy ultrasound. Please pause this video now to ask your instructor any questions about this course. We thank the following individuals who played a major role in course development. Dr. Robert Nathan, Dr. William Marks, and Nicole Goldsmith, registered sonographer. Many other individuals contributed valuable time and expertise in the instructional design and materials development, including Dr. Christina Adams Waldorf, Dr. Scott Barnhart, Dr. Michael Kawuya, Susan Kingston, and Stacy Lissett. Finally, we wish to thank Dr. William Marks for the use of images from his book, Ultrasound, A Practical Approach, and Jennifer Summers and Jan Hamanishi for graphic design and illustrations. The University of Washington Department of Radiology has trained healthcare workers in pregnancy ultrasound in many parts of the world. If you have questions about this video or course, please contact Dr. Robert Nathan, Dr. William Marks, or Dr. Christina Adams Waldorf. This course was collaboratively developed by the University of Washington Department of Radiology, Obstetrics and Gynecology, and the International Training and Education Center for Health, ITEC. It was made possible through a grant from the GE Foundation. Consano also contributed funding. We are grateful for the video production sponsored by the University of Washington Institute for Simulation and Interprofessional Studies. Please visit our website at tinyurl.com backslash UW Ultrasound to access all of our training materials. This material is copyrighted. You are permitted to copy, distribute, and post to websites. You are permitted to modify the content to adapt to specific populations and user needs on the condition that you include attribution to the University of Washington and retain any copyright notices and citations and attributions included in the original basic obstetric ultrasound training for midwives. The material in this video is provided for information purposes only. The University of Washington Institute for Simulation and Interprofessional Studies does not take responsibility for the accuracy of the content in this video.